going on in crew? My name is Andrew. Welcome back to a brand new exciting video. First thing you might notice is that I did get a haircut. Yes, it is true. The hair was just getting a bit unruly, so it's time to chop it off. Not sure how I feel about this. I usually like my hair a little bit longer, but you guys didn't come to talk about my hair. We're talking about this super cool iPhone throwing in the air, zooming in transition effect. I originally did this effect inside of my anyone can create video. I got a bunch of comments asking me to break it down. So today we're going to do that. Real quick guys, we actually do have a sponsor for this video. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in filmmaking, photography, business, or really just whatever you want. No matter what you're searching for, you can take as many classes as you want in whatever category you want without having to pay for the classes individually. That's the super awesome part about it. You don't have to pay individually for each class class that you take. And Skillshare comes in at less than $10 a month, which makes it much more affordable than most similar services. A premium subscription is going to get you guys access to all sorts of different kinds of videos and filmmaking, editing, or really just whatever you want. And actually guys, I have paid my own money, like before the sponsorship or anything like that, I've paid my own personal money to have a subscription to Skillshare. I actually do believe in it, what they're doing and everything like that. This kind of sounds counterintuitive because this is a tutorial channel, but sometimes jumping around different tutorials on YouTube gets a little bit jumpy and you just want to take a full-on course on a program or a type of filmmaking or something like that. And that's when Skillshare really comes in clutch just to help you learn something new. So be sure to check out Skillshare down in the description below. They're going to be at the top of the description and you guys can get a two months free trial using Skillshare. That being said, guys, I've talked quite enough. So let's hop in After Effects and actually start talking about this effect. All right, everybody. So I'm inside of After Effects now. I'm inside of the actual file that I use for my Anyone Can Create video. And this is the composition. This is it. This is everything. Thing. All I did was change some of the titles and clean it up a bit to make it a little bit easier to see But this is everything. This is the entire effect all of the layers that I used now Like I said earlier what we're gonna be doing for this video is going layer by layer talking about what exactly that layer does Why I put it in there and how it contributes to the effect So I guess the easiest way to do this would probably be to just start with this top layer and work our way down So the first thing we've got going on here is the screen user interface layer Now as you guys might notice this layer is turned off which might seem weird what this is is essentially a texture map. Later on in the video, you can see right here, there's a video playing on the iPhone. Now that video is coming from this screen user interface layer. If I double click this, you can see we go into this 1080 by 1920 layer, I think. It's just the vertical iPhone screen, and we've got the footage right here. We've also got this parallel light here. Um, this is just darkening the footage because later on I brightened it, or something like that happened. Something with the brightness got thrown off, so I added in the parallel light to sort of balance things out. Let's talk a little bit later on about how I actually took this user interface and inserted it into the iPhone model. But no, just right now, this is the texture map for that and anything that I change inside of this video is going to change inside of the iPhone. For instance, if I made a solid layer and we made it blue, cool, and we added it over everything, now you can see the iPhone is blue. So that's really all you need to know about that layer. The next layer we've got is pretty straightforward. It's the color grade layer. I've got the colorista effect added, and this is just the color grade layer for this whole clip. Pretty straightforward, pretty self-explanatory. It's just an adjustment layer. Moving on down to the iPhone cover up layer. As you guys can see, I'm holding an actual iPhone. There's an actual iPhone in my hand and that's my iPhone. It's right next to me right now. And you can see that I actually do throw this iPhone up into the air. Now that's great, but at some point I have to switch this real iPhone out with the with the fake iPhone 3D iPhone model. And that takes place right here. You can see the model starting to fade on. And then by this frame, you can see the original phone is completely out of the shot. Now what I had to do is cover up that iPhone so that you could only see the model. The way I did this is I duplicated the base footage and then I drew a quick mask around it. And then I just changed the position to cover up the iPhone. So if I turn off this iPhone cover up layer, you can see the real iPhone right there. If we turn it back on, that covers it up. There wasn't even a lot of keyframing that had to go on because the real iPhone was only in the frame for like less than a second, really. So that's pretty much it for the iPhone cover up layer. Moving on down, we've got this background track layer. All this is is just a quick track for the beginning of the background trees. I tracked the background trees. I think I did it inside of Mocha. And the reason I did this is because I just wanted to create sort of an anchor for the base movement of this iPhone. It's really hard to make the movement of the iPhone look natural but tracking the background and parenting the iPhone model to this background track really just helped to sort of anchor 
the iPhone back to the reality of this clip. So it just helped to make the movement of it a little bit more seamless. Moving on down, we've got this sunlight imitation layer. Now I haven't worked with 3D models all that much, but I do know that some of the hardest parts of working with 3D models is making the light look natural on them. So the way I made this light look natural is I added a parallel light. You can go up to layer, new, and then you can add a light. And then I sort of just repositioned it. You can see where it's sort of angled on the clip. This makes it look a lot more fancy than it actually is, but I just angled it so that the light was sort of up and sort of behind the iPhone. And that's sort of where the general direction of the sun was coming from. Like right here, you can see that the back of the iPhone is kind of shaded while there's this rim of light on the edges of it. This is because if in real life this iPhone was actually flying through the air and the sun was over here, the light would hit it, sort of wrap around the edges a bit, but the back would be in the shadow. The light wouldn't be catching on it. Using this parallel light just helped to make it look a little bit more realistic. Then moving down, we've got this camera layer. If we, you want our keyboard to show the keyframes, you can see we've got five simple keyframes going on right here. And all this is, is adding in that zooming in effect. It's just zooming in and then I repositioned it a bit to come right on in on the iPhone And then you will notice this last keyframe right here This was just to slow down the final zooming in on the clip just to make the effect a little bit more dramatic It's not necessarily more realistic because technically the phone is sort of just kind of levitating in air at this moment But I think it sort of just helps to orient the viewers a little bit more and show them exactly what's going on if it sort of just rushed right into it and the viewers never saw that i think it would be a little bit confusing about what actually just happened so that's why i decided to add in that last keyframe and just slow down the entire zooming in effect now we're flying on through this but we're getting to really the bulk of the effect which is the iphone model the way i got this 3d iphone model was using a plugin called element 3d from videocopilot.com i'll link it down below but it's a fantastic plugin for using 3d models inside of after effects you can do some super advanced stuff with it but it's super user friendly and easy for people even people like me who had little to really no experience with 3d models prior to making my anyone can create video and yeah if i go to this scene setup and i click on that that opens up the element 3d plugin interface and you can see we've got this iphone render rendering through right there you can see that's our footage right there that we replaced the screen with and now one thing i do want to point out is that no i did not personally model this iphone i didn't like go into cinema 4d or something like that and make an actual model of the iphone i did purchase this model online i know that's kind of lame but i'm not a 3d modeler i have no experience doing any kind of 3d modeling so it's just a lot easier for me to go online and purchase a model to use for this video this model was made specifically for element 3d so it came with all the materials and everything like that and the main thing I only had to do was replace the screen now if you guys are interested in how I replace the screen in the element 3d effects controls I went down to the custom layers and then under the custom texture maps layers under layer one I chose the screen UI layer that we created earlier and then when I went into scene setup and I chose the screen and went down to textures diffuse I changed it to custom layer one and that's how I got that screen to be replaced with my footage and yeah that's pretty much it and then if I hit you on my keyboard and show all the keyframes you can see that pretty much all I did was just add some keyframes to rotate the iPhone a little bit nothing too fancy I wish I could say that I was like a master of physics and I like meticulously studied the actual physics of what the phone would do in the air if I had thrown it up and the velocity and the inertia and everything like that I really didn't do that at all I pretty much just experimented with it a little bit to see what looked natural and eventually I got this this whole effect was just a lot a lot of experimentation just some XYZ rotations nothing too fancy but I did eventually go into my favorite thing the graph editor and I did adjust some of the actual keyframe interpolation to make it just a little bit more smooth a little bit more seamless overall and that's about it for the iPhone layer and then finally all we have is just this base and this base is just the footage layer so if we like turn that off you can see the footage is gone and you'll notice that I did add this camera lens blur effect the reason why this is so important is really twofold first off because if the camera was to zoom in on this iPhone the background would get more blurry that's how the camera would work there would be more separation and everything like that so it just looks more natural adding the camera lens blur effect. The other reason why it's so essential is because if I turn, turn this blur off, check out what happens. Boom, you can see the background is super pixelated, super noisy, and just 
ugly in general. It's no bueno at all. So this blur just helps to mask all of that noise and pixelation and everything like that. By the way, guys, always use camera lens blur if you can over any other blur really at all. I'll use Gaussian if I need something like really quick, really simple. But in general, I'm always trying to opt for that camera lens blur effect. Super, super accurate. And you can get some really nice effects. You can get those nice bokeh orbs and everything like that. And then finally, we just had the beginning layer, which is just this beginning footage right here. And there you guys have it. That's about it. That's pretty much all I did. The final thing that I did is I selected all the layers, I pre-composed them, and then I did some time remapping on the effect. The reason I did the time remapping was one, so that it would pace better with the video, but the second reason was just to speed it up and sort of cover up the sloppiness of this effect. I'm not claiming that this effect is like super clean or anything like that, because obviously, obviously, it's not a very clean effect. So by speeding it up, it sort of added to the smoke and mirrors of the whole thing and help just to cover up the sloppiness of the overall effect and here it is guys this is the finished effect without the speeding up or time remapping it's not super clean but I think it gets the job done and not too shabby for like your first attempt at anything with like a 3d model so there you guys have it hope you enjoyed and there you guys have it that's what I'm talking about that is the finished effect this was a bit of a different tutorial I've never done a tutorial like this in the past but I hope you guys learned something new I'm sorry I couldn't show you how to sort of just do a copy and paste transition but like I said at the beginning of this video it's just so tailored to my individual clips that it would be pretty much useless for me to do something like that if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below also hit the little bell next to the subscribe button to turn on post notifications I hope this video was enlightening and you guys might feel inspired to start trying to mess around with some 3d models this was like the very first effect i ever did with 3d models but then i actually ended up using the iphone model in a school project that i had i'm in a computer science class i needed to make a video and i was able to use this 3d model and pull off some really pretty professional looking effects really easily using video copilot's element 3d anyways guys let me know what videos you want to see in the future thank you so much for watching this video be sure to get outside film a video make a difference and i'll see you guys in the next one Peace. Oh,